triathlon, as much as it's my passion, it's, it's my job as well. And I think like any job, you need to be able to switch off. So I can switch off. I, you know, when I come home, um, you know, Neri and the kids are there and, you know, I have a more important job, which is to be a husband and a dad. And, um, you know, although I must say you can never switch off completely. I can't um, because, you know, there's always work to do on the computer and emailing and... Um, and that kind of thing, you're coordinating your week and, and sponsorship obligations. So, but it's the, it's the career path I've chosen. I love it. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't swap it. I think you look at any job, it's got its advantages and disadvantages. And, and my job has uh, the advantages well outweigh the disadvantage. You know, I, that's why I've hung around so long because I love it. So, um, as far as while I'm racing, it, you know, I, I don't know that I'm expressionless or, or stoic. I just, I race the way I race. I race to feel. I just try and stay relaxed. I don't want, um, you know, I don't want my face to be pained or because I think that tension seeps through your body. I think, you know, the relaxation starts from your face or from your mind and, and, and can spread. So, you know, I remember Miles Stewart telling me that years ago. He used to try and run with a relaxed face. That's the way the Kenyans used to do it as well. And that sort of relaxation spreads and you see Simon Whitfield has done it and um, so it's, it's just it's, it's come naturally to me to be honest um, you know there's a lot going on on the inside and I'm, I'm thinking a lot and the mind's always always working but um, to be honest I wouldn't even I mean obviously you see the odd race photo of yourself and and that kind of thing and it's always a little surprising to be honest because I yeah I I feel like I am expressing a lot of emotion, but maybe it's just on the inside, I, I don't know. Well, in, in the marathon or at any point in the race, I do it a lot to feel. I, it was a skill that I picked up early on. Um, you know, when I started in the mid-90s, we weren't as tech-focused or um, tech-centered as we are now with, with Garmin's and heart rate monitors and, and power meters. and. And at any rate, I, I, you know, I was a university student. I couldn't really afford a heart rate monitor, and no, nobody really had them, to be honest. Uh, you learnt what it felt like to be running at threshold. You learnt what it felt like to be running over threshold. You learnt what sustainable pace felt like. And you know, I'm glad I learnt that way because that's still what I use to this day. Obviously, I, I do ride and train to power now, um, which has been a big help in training. I think all that kind of information is, is totally useful if you know how to interpret it and use it. Um, I think to improve things, uh, but in the race, I do it a lot to feel. I know what pace I can hold, and every year's different. I mean, you know, the first year I won in Canada, I think I ran a 2:44. The second year I, I won in 09, I ran a 2:48, which is no less of a run because I think I was the only run under 2:50 that year, and there's only about five runs under three hours. So uh, I think Andy Rayleigh had the second quickest run that year. So it's it's very condition dependent. Obviously, you can gauge effort using a heart rate monitor, or but I, I know what marathon effort feels like. I know what the early or the first half of a marathon should feel like. I know what the back half should feel like. And same on the bike, you know, I think with experience, you learn to, and I think we all have that internal mechanism where we can um, pace ourselves accordingly. Well, I certainly know I do it. And, a lot of you know that information and those feelings have been reinforced by having a power meter because you know all it is now is just putting a number to the feeling though. So I wouldn't say I'm a numbers person. One thing I'm, uh, I guess, religious with is the nutrition as you need to be. But once again, it's not even. I mean, you have a strategy, but it's not like I have to have X calories per hour and X amount of fluid. I I do it a lot to feel as well. I know when my stomach feels full to back off or to dilute what's in there. I, I know. And I guess experience helps you helps you learn those things, but um, you know I think the it's a surefire path to disaster when you go in with a strategy and you want to stick to it hard and fast. I think you need to have practiced, you need to have a, a plan, but you need to be flexible within that as well. Um, things change. You might swallow some salt water in the swim, and that might upset your stomach. Hence, your ability to absorb early is 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 less than it otherwise would be. Everything, every little factor can change can change things. So uh, if it's windier, you know, you tend to get more dehydrated and obviously burn through more calories as well. So I think these are all things you need to be aware of.